In a second communication with Thorhan Eredjian through Elena Danan on July 8, I asked Thorhan questions about a mega project called the Hub, the Earth Alliance being given control of our solar system, China refusing to participate with the Earth Alliance in building a combined space fleet, failing deep state efforts to manufacture a war between Russia and the US military, current events on Ganymede, the differences between how Earth and Palladian military forces are trained, current events on the Moon, space arcs, Cedar ships, and updated disclosure plans. You are listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala, your source for the uncensored truth regarding the human, extraterrestrial, global, and political agenda. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel. And now, here is Dr. Michael Sala. Yes, we are ready. We are recording this conversation. Yes, it is, it is going to go public. Yes, you need to stay ser keep serious. Yes. <laughs> Let's go, Isel. Well, can you tell us, Thorhan, you know, where are you located at the moment? I am on the planet you name Ganymede. I am here for work. I am here to meet with representatives of the Intergalactic Confederation regarding the construction of the new hub in the vicinity of Jupiter. This is what I am doing today on your day on Terra. So can you tell us more about uh, the uh, moon Ganymede? Like, what is there? Why, why is that being used as a base of operations for, the con for this big construction project, this gateway? The construction project is not operated on Ganymede, but in space, in the vicinity of Jupiter, in higher orbit of Jupiter, the most distant gravitational orbit. This is a position that is stable, and the station will not turn around Jupiter, okay? This station that we call a hub in your language is meant to gather representatives of each organization in this galaxy plus the Intergalactic Confederation. This hub in space in the outer orbit of Jupiter, will serve to treat trade and commerce and exchanges and host visitors coming from the Stargate. The Stargate, as you know, mm -hmm. is behind the locked orbit of Jupiter. This station is necessary, for there is now more visitors coming into your solar system. All is well, going well with the construction. Soon we will start assembling ships that will serve as elements to start this project. I am here on Ganymede to meet with representatives of the Intergalactic Confederation and other minor groups supplying materials for construction. This is interesting, not the work I used to do, but for change, it is distracting and it is all right. Is the Earth Alliance uh, involved in this uh, construction project, in supplying material and any resources? The Earth Alliance is supplying personnel. The materials a little, not sufficiently because this needs to be built for durability. And there is no material that equals certain provenances in this galaxy. The materials produced on Terra are not sufficiently effective to construct such a structure. It needs to sustain different densities and gravitational forces. 
so the Earth Alliance will be here to supply personnel when the hub will be terminated, finished the construction. Then the Earth Alliance will take over responsibility. First, security, safety, and then when you will be ready on Terra, the Earth Alliance will take over the management of the hub. So what kind of personnel are the Earth Alliance providing at the moment for the construction of the hub? Military personnel to ensure the safety of the construction, that there is no fights and conflicts between the different contractors for building, and also the civilians must, must not access the construction sites. This is very regulated. The safety is also regarding the incoming visitors, the civilians. You never know who is coming and you need to really regulate the passage and there will be taxes beneficent to only one party, the Earth Alliance, because this solar system belongs to Terra, the highest evolved civilization in the system. So Terra will manage the hub and get the taxes. So who uh, is involved in actually the construction? It sounds as though there are Earth corporations involved in the construction providing personnel. Is, is this what is happening? Two Earth corporations. Most of the materials for the construction comes from different solar systems. But two corporations from Terra are providing certain materials, even if these materials are not sufficiently efficient. These materials provide some kind of help. They need to be part of it. This is why we are including Terran organizations for construction materials, but also technology for the start. The Terra, Terra military, will have a district in the hub, only military. When the hub will be finished, then the civilians from Terra will be able to come. This is not for now, this will take time. Some civilian flights are being tested in the orbit of Terra. Can you say anything about uh, the the Terran military that are providing security for the for this hub construction project? Uh, is uh, U.S. Space Command in charge, or do other uh, Terran um, nations have uh, significant military uh, personnel? The corporations are linked with the agreements passed on Jupiter with also the officers of certain military factions of Terra. All are working together. Those are the personnel that are involved with the Jupiter Agreement. The military, I can name them, U.S. Air Force, Space Command is involved. Also, you have Russian military, Italian, Australian, Japan, France, UK. Germany didn't want to get involved. This is the military who are ensuring the safety for the new hub. Can you comment on the Chinese military? Uh, it's very noticeable that they are absent from this group. They didn't want to continue working with us. They want to build their own force in space. This is not acceptable. They will fail because they do not have any support from any organization of the Galactic Alliance. We are working 
by diplomatic actions to influence them to not do this because it will cause economic failures to their country on Terra. They are spending a lot of funds to build space fleet that will not be linked to the Galactic Alliance, to the Earth Alliance. They will be on their own. And this is ridiculous. This is a question of pride. They want to make more profit while not being part of the Alliance. Uh, the cooperation between the Russian military and the US military is, is very interesting given that at the moment there is a proxy war being created against Russia that is being led by the US military. It, so this appears to be a contradiction. Is it because uh, the uh, Russian and the American militaries secretly cooperate in space but on Earth, they compete. You have different factions within the military. These are not the same people who provoke a war and they want to create this war, which is a misinformation. This war is not meant to happen. This is diplomatic games and games with the public who will want to know more and will not focus on what is happening for real. These are actions that are distraction from the Dark Ones on Terra. The military that is involved with the Earth Alliance and the Alliance is... I cannot say more. Okay. okay. Can you say um, why the gateway was necessary to be built given that there is this... Uh, uh, Ashtar command facility in the upper atmosphere of Jupiter. Why was not? Why was that not suitable for the, this kind of task? The Ashtar Galactic Command facility in the upper atmosphere of Jupiter is not made to receive traders. It is a military facility. The traders were welcomed on Ganymede in the different facilities. Ashtar Galactic Command, the station named Shan, is not a trading facility and it has its limited surface. On Ganymede, the different facilities held by different organizations are saturated. Now that your solar system is safe, and free. There is a lot, a greater number of traders coming in. Now we need to deal with this new affluence of traders. They want to visit Sol, the Sol system, and mine resources and exchange, and they are all dealing, I will say, with the Earth Alliance. We are redirecting them. All organizations will be represented on the hub. The hub is a necessary decision initiated by the Intergalactic Confederation. And this was a good idea because it is safer to have the adequate superficie to receive the traders, the greater number incoming number, and we need to have more security, greater forces, to check them out, that there is no infiltration. This is a very difficult task. The decision was difficult to take, but we took it. The Earth Alliance had the last word for the decision. What kind of propulsion system will be used to keep the hub in the high atmosphere orbit of Jupiter? There is no propulsion system used because it is a locked geostationary orbital point. This is stable. 
there is a propulsion system that will be implied if there is an emergency situation with torsion fields and other technologies for the core of the station will be composed of ships from the Intergalactic Confederation that they will offer. How big will this hub be? What, what is its uh, overall diameter? It will vary in time as we will expand it. I am not at the moment able to tell you the exact measurement as it is still in discussion. When it comes to Ganymede, can, can you tell us anything about uh, what extraterrestrial civilizations have a permanent pre uh, presence on Ganymede? You have different organizations. There is a life form that is original to this planet, aquatic life forms. The Intergalactic Confederation has the greatest facility on Ganymede. They are located in two positions on the planet. Near the equator, in the upper hemisphere, and one near to the pole, the north, in a region that is called by you the horse shoe. They are here. Then you have the council of Al Milam that is represented by Ginvu. You have the Galactic Federation of Worlds represented there. The Terran military have also now a facility there. They used to go in different other facilities. Now they have their own. You have also the League of Merchant that has a hub on Ganymede. And this is when the situation became out of hand. Too many people on Ganymede. This is how we decided to construct the hub. Has the Galactic Federation have been helping the Earth military in the training of their soldiers to perform these duties involving different extraterrestrial visitors? We gave them the technology. We gave them facilities on board our ships with all the devices necessary for the training. We have been working with Solar Warden. We started with the military organization named U.S. Navy. Then other organizations joined other countries as well. It is a multi-country organization that you have. We are helping them training soldiers, those who are enhanced. Those who are enhanced are done with the help of our technology. But this is not something that we recommended at first. The Earth Terran military wanted this technology from us. So we gave them because we have agreements within this Earth Alliance. Their composition, genetically speaking, is weak for space combat and facing other species. So they needed help. We offered genetic enhancement but the Terrans prefer always technology. So we gave it to them, but we are monitoring. Behold, there are dark programs that have been using this same technology, not given by us, but by the enemy. Sikar. And this technology for enhancing the capability and performance of human, of Terra is not healthy. It is a slavery where the beings suffer and they do not live long. They do not care about the bodies, they do not care about the souls, and they are, for them, material for war. We disagree with this. 
the good technology we have been giving to the Earth Alliance is something that is not harmful. It is healthy and it helps the genetics to be improved. But this is technology. We do not use this technology for ourselves. This is a choice. Some of us were not in agreement with this decision to give this technology to the Earth Alliance, but it was decided that they would have it. Stephen Chua talked about how having high levels of gamma brainwave activity helped him fly uh, fly-by-thought technologies that were reverse engineered from extraterrestrial technologies and that people or personnel that did not have high gamma brain waves suffered brain damage or died. So how important is it for Earth military or even uh, your people in terms of developing high gamma brain wave activity for interacting and using advanced technologies? Our brains are not wired in the same way as the human of Terra brains. This is different. We produce different ranges of brain waves. So this is not comparable. This is why humans of Terra needed, I do not say needed, it is the wrong word. I would say they requested technology. But what they do not understand is that they can develop these brain waves to produce the same brain waves as we do, because we are humans as well. We are the same species. And in the same species, we can reach out to the same achievements. We can show the way, but the military from Terra always wants technology, technology that they can take from us and use differently. To produce gamma brain waves, you do not need technology. You never needed it as humans. This is a training that you can develop and you can produce them very strongly. Stephen Chua has this ability naturally, for he was a higher soul. Everyone can develop them on Terra. We have them naturally enhanced by nature. But the Terrans need to work, to function, and use their brainwaves, the gamma brainwaves, for doing good on their planet. Can Thorhan explain how a Erahel is trained to be a, a warrior. There is a physical training that is performed that is very intense. The performance must be through training because through training you train also the mind. If you take technology to enhance your body, you do not grow in consciousness and in resilience with your mind. You can face some situation where the body will be able to physically cope, but your mind will be afraid and weak, and this will be a disaster. We train our soldiers organically. We help development of consciousness as we train to be more fit and stronger. Now we need for the technology to be compatible to use technology, holographic technology, especially for the pilots and especially for the ground military. We need to stay in contact of a secure manner. So we use technology such as implants. Holographic implants are the most common for they are not physical and they cannot be detected. Quantum technology and connectivity works wonderfully 
with holographic technology. When you have a physical device, the quantum is not, I will say, less safe. We train our soldiers with a performance of the mind equal to the performance of the body. The pilots will train the mind sharper and the consciousness. The pilots develop an expansion of their consciousness and they are in total resonance with their ESBI, with who they are, and they can see farther. They can see ahead of the ship. They can see the future, what is going to come their way. It's a piloting from the point of view of consciousness, of consciousness. Have there been human soldiers or Terran military that have participated in the Erahel training? And, and how did they perform if they did? Yes, we have a section of combat where humans from Terra decide to enroll. This is a very difficult training because genetically they are weaker than the Ahil. The body cannot withstand the same conditions of pressure, of resilience than we would do. But they choose and they become good and they become a combat elite. They have chosen, but they know that the training is not only physical, but it is also a training in mind and consciousness. These ones are good warriors. They will be special forces on Terra in the Earth Alliance. They will oversee other contingents who choose to fight and to expand their potential with technology and normal Terra training. Consciousness is important for a fighter. You need to be in tune with your body, with your vehicle, with your weapons and with your purpose. If you do not set your consciousness on a target, you will miss it for sure. This goes very fast when we are in the space. In space, there is no limitation. You can go extremely fast and the combats are at a high speed. So your consciousness needs to pilot the ship because the body, the muscular response is not fast enough. This is why consciousness is interfaced with the consciousness of the ship. This is why we build ships that are alive, that have a consciousness. Depending on the cultures, some ships are organically alive, some ships are synthetically alive. There is a great range of technology, a difference depending on the cultures who build these ships. But commonly speaking, the consciousness of the pilot is always interfaced with the consciousness of the ship. This is the only way you can drive fast and react fast by thought. Thought can also distort time. You can slow down time to perform an action. This is feasible as well. Are there uh, particular earth nations or nationalities or sexes that perform better in this, uh, in the training that the uh, Ahel do for their warriors? The Taal are very good. Most of the Taal are pilot. The females, especially. The Ahil are good because we are strong physically and we have a great resilience of emotions. We can easily control our emotions, not as much as a Tal, we are different races. You have other races, such, such as the Egaroth. 
they are extremely quick with their thoughts. Among the human races, the Tashkeru have the fastest, faster rate of thinking. These are excellent officers, taking decisions such as ship captains, fleet commanders. The Tashkeru are the best officers in the alliance. You will find that the Ashtar Galactic Command is run by the Tashkeru. This is a very efficient military force. Although mercenary, everyone requires their services. The US Navy and Solar Warden are known to have developed 20 MBAP programs. Now, is this something that is going to continue as the Earth Alliance works with the Galactic Federation and the other galactic associations, or, or will it be discontinued once there is disclosure on planet Earth? The programs of space combat have been terminated in the Earth Alliance. They are just only finishing their time. You know, in the Earth Alliance, no one is taken in these programs against their free will. They are offered the work. They accept or not. When they accept, they know that their memory will be erased and they will be regressed. They sign. And they are aware. They are perfectly aware. These programs have stopped. They are just only finishing their time. Now, the programs run by the dark military related to the deep state haven't stopped. They think that they can still take people and get them ready by breaking their mind. This will stop eventually when the deep state, as you call it, on Terra, collapses irremediably. Is the deep state working with China in some capacity? Because China seems to be outside of the Earth Alliance agreements with the Federation in building the hub. So is, is China secretly working with the deep state or, or is, is there a serious possibility China in the future could be compromised by Earth's enemies? The country you call China has many ties with the deep state. They play games and you think they are enemies, but in truth, they just play economic games that look like, on the surface, they are fighting against each other or competing, but they are not competing. They are just playing games to hide what they are doing behind. Behold, the whole China is not taken by deep state. The good rest of the government is trying to build their own independence and autonomy. You know, they were upset after the Jupiter agreements that they would not be part of the command of the new Terra Military Space Federation. They wanted the power. They were not happy. They decided to take upon this old project of theirs, which is building their own space Force Federation, trying to gather other nations to their cause and ally with them. They will fail. The other nations go with a stronger, with the Earth Global Federation. The Artemis Accords that will grow and soon will unveil a new name for the fleet in space. Federated Fleet. China will not be 
a, tr a threat, they will fail because they will be on their own. They will manage, probably, to keep the gathering of other nations nearby their country. But this is not viable. And this is ridiculous because their economy will fail on this point. It will damage their country. They want to try. They want to take the lunar moon. They are trying. But the presence of the Earth Alliance on Luna is too important. Luna is special. You have a like Ganymede, different organizations from Terra. And these different organizations do not all work together. Luna is now possession and custody of Terra. What they do on Luna is now of the decision of the Terrans. We only intervene when there are exchanges in technology in the factories of the Earth Alliance. This is our interaction because the Earth Alliance is part of the Federation. We work together. But the other organizations, we have no saying on this. They are just only doing and applying the agendas that they have. We have no say in this. Who is now on Earth's moon? Is it just the Earth Alliance and countries like China? Um, or are there extraterrestrial civilizations that still have a permanent presence on the moon? In the underground of the moon, the moon has been inhabited by ancient life forms. These are still there. Also, the Galactic Federation of Worlds has a presence in the facilities we share with the Earth Alliance. There is no more Orion, Nebu, Ducol, the Greys, on Luna. There is neither Sikar on Luna. All the Dark Ones were expelled some time ago. Our Lunar Operations Command was repurposed to be a healing facility for the Earth Alliance, the Space Force or Space Command. And it was said that one day uh, that Lunar Operations Command would become a healing centre for the entire planet. Is, is that still happening? The healing has I would say nearly stopped because the military now is not fighting anymore. Now we are focusing our attention on producing medical devices that will be implemented on Terra when the deep state will have collapsed. We are already implying these technologies. Implementing. Sorry. <laughs> Implementing on Terra. Well, it was described. Uh, can you maybe clarify how many motherships from the Cedar races are currently in Earth orbit, and and what are they doing in Earth orbit? Six, two new arrived recently. What they are doing in Earth orbit. They are monitoring what humanity of Terra is doing. They are also scanning the population to identify the souls that are from theirs. They are trying to find all the technologies that are in the process of activation that were of theirs. And they are here because they are concerned 
that the deep state would try to get these technologies to work. They are scanning the population to protect theirs, their own souls, their own envoys. They also have their own envoy program. They want to protect their people. Are these six cedar motherships using orbs as their probes, as their way of monitoring Earth's nations and the activities of the deep state? Because there has been a surge in the number of orb sightings all over the planet. So do some or many of these come from the motherships? Many of these, I would say, maybe practically all of them, because some are ours. Some are made on Terra. Most of the orbs, especially the plasma orbs, are from the Intergalactic Confederation. The metallic ones are ours. They are security scanners. The frequency scanners are the Federation, the Intergalactic Confederation. My apologies. I speak fast. She has to repeat. Okay. Uh, what about the space arcs? Are they releasing plasma orbs or metallic orbs? Plasma orbs. Some are releasing, do not get me wrong, me uh, metallic, metallic orbs. These are not of the Intergalactic Confederation. These are the Anachim orbs. Uh, question for someone. There are different sorts of arcs, okay? Uh, not all from the Intergalactic Confederation. You have Anunnaki orb, uh, arcs, as you said. Are there other uh, cultures who left orbs here on Terra? Please. All right. We have orbs belonging to other ships of other cultures. Erahil, Silosi, and also ancient civilization that have now left the solar system before the Anachim arrived. A civilization discovered Terra and left technology. They were not the Intergalactic Confederation. They were others interdimensional cultures. They left technology, ships, and this is very ancient. This also is releasing signals because they have manifested, because you understand, now Terra has been liberated from a long time, dark presence, and now all the ancient technologies belonging to different cultures are activating and these ancient cultures are manifesting to now rejoin with their technology and their envoys. This will be a brand new world. You have barely an idea of what it could be and what it will be all together. Is there some kind of countdown happening with the Cedar motherships or with the space arcs appearing in Earth's sky, thereby ending the secrecy concerning extraterrestrial life? Is, is there a countdown? And, and if so, is that why there is uh, an increase in disclosure in the United States? I wouldn't call this a countdown, but a plan with a tight schedule. The countdown could be associated as a name, but I would say it is a schedule 
with precise dates that can move if events are taking time to be resolved, but the schedule doesn't change. It is definite. Would the middle of 2024 be a important date? Because this seems to be uh, when in the, the US is in the process of passing legislation where all companies have to reveal the reverse engineering projects they have concerning extraterrestrial technologies uh, by around the middle of 2024. So is, is that a date or a time that is part of this uh, plan? To get to this decision, it has taken more time than we expected. This should have happened by the end of 2023. Now, this will happen later because, you know, Terra administration is not all in the power of the Earth Alliance. There are delays that can be expected. Half middle of 2024. Yes, you are correct. This will cause change, a positive change. We have taken a little bit of delay. And 2024, we will have the results of a big change. If all goes well, and I believe it will go well. The military will be in charge for a while of governing certain critical faction of the government. There will be more military leaders involved in the government at certain key positions for a transition period. This will be necessary when the remnants of the deep state will collapse. Mm. Well, I want to thank you for answering these questions. They've been very helpful. My pleasure, Michael. I had told that I would do a second session. You know, you must tell them not to be afraid because we know what is coming for you. We are working very hard to stabilize and protect our plants, common plants, and the public will know soon. You understand, tell them that they must not know for the moment or it will compromise our perfect plan for the disclosure of our presence. This is a game a very tight game we need to play with the dark ones and as long as the game goes on we cannot unveil our moods to the public i apologize this is the truth tell them to be patient and to focus on what they need to do for themselves and the world around them the truth is on its way thank you you have been listening to ExoPolitics today with Dr. Michael Sala. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Join or start a conversation in the comments. Take the time to explore the vast library of best-selling books, webinars, and podcasts by Dr. Sala. Visit exopoliticstoday.com. Mm -hmm.